heads can be involved yeah. in recycling. I'm, I'm, I'm with you. Yeah. I just want you to understand how to Yeah, but he can't do anything it. about it because yeah. Yeah, he's an employee versus uh, somebody that's empowered to change, make changes in the law and, and policy. I'm with you, though. Yeah. I hear you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He wants to keep his job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. So, yeah. You know, most of you should have recycling where you live. And so, at the very least, you can recycle at your apartment building. Oh, what, what are clamshell containers? Great question. So this is, uh, yeah, we're talking about all, almost all plastics. Like I said, most rigid plastics. Um, clamshells are, they're a type of to-go container. And if you think of a clam, you know, it opens up like this. No, yeah. So those, those containers, those to-go containers that oh. can lock, and then you can pop it open yeah. and yeah. enjoy your salad or whatever. Okay. But it's just a style of a uh, rigid container. Um, yeah. So like we like you mentioned earlier with the Chinese takeout, the mm -hmm. black bottom clear lid, all those containers are recyclable. Um, and then you know just always refer to the outreach materials. I'll leave some here. Um, this is your guide. This tells you what's acceptable according to SS program. Yeah, can, yeah. Do you have any extra? We can I'll I'll put some on my floor in my building. I have one. Yeah. Of course, yeah. I have some. I have some extras. Um, so next. Everyone knows aluminum cans are recyclable, uh, but people don't always recycle foil. Aluminum foil and aluminum foil trays are recyclable. My rule uh, for that is if you're baking like chicken or pork or something like that, if you're, if you're bake, baking meat in the oven, it's going to get uh, all, all the, you know, some of the meat and, and the fat is going to burn and, and, and stick to the aluminum foil. So just put it in the trash at that point. But if you're using it just to cover something or like wrap up your sandwich, you can dust off those crumbs, uh, rinse off like any sauce, barbecue sauce, pasta sauce, and then just ball it up like this and throw that aluminum foil in the recycling. It's totally, it's definitely recyclable. Um, also on this, you can't see it there, but pie tins. If you buy a pie. I live in the East Bay Nations. You know, they have a lot of pies. Um, sounds good, right? Uh, those pie tins can be recycled. So aluminum foil. Steel cans and aluminum cans and tin cans. Um, you know, just talking about contamination, I already mentioned that once you put food waste into the recycling, it, it has the potential to ruin the paper and, and make it not recyclable anymore. So we want to avoid that. Um, here's some examples of products. So the you know the benefit of recycling is we can turn that item into something new, either the same product or something very similar. And the benefit of that is that we don't have to harvest tr new trees to make our paper. We can recycle what we have already. We don't have to um, uh, um, you know, use oil, go looking for, for new oil to make plastics. We can recycle the plastics we already have. So there's a lot of environmental benefits there um, with recycling. and. Uh, it creates jobs as well. Okay, they keep. I hear. I keep hearing that um, we're going to end up with with all these little um, plastic bags with dog poop in them in our in our landfills and stuff. Why don't they make recycle little, you know, for for picking up their dog's excrement and? Yeah, yeah. So there's a there's a difference. Uh, you know, just for talking about these programs the way we talk about it. There's a difference between the recyclable items and compostable items. And so I think what you're saying is some people want like dog poop bags that break down, right? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And why don't they why don't they just make just yeah, make that's them a good all question. so they break down because they keep saying that the, that those those bags are gonna end up they are never gonna go away. Right, right. So so actually everything is gonna break down at some point but some things take a really long time to break down. Um, so with, with the, actually it's kind of counterintuitive, but with a landfill, you don't want things to break down. You want them to just sit there. It's a, it's a grave site for materials. That's the intention of the landfills, just to put it there, stash it, cover up with dirt, and leave it there, right? But um, what happens, and this gets into the organics, um, let's, let's, let's hold off, once we get to organics, we'll talk about that a little more. I just want to show you, this is where your recyclables are taken to. It's called Recycle Central. Um, it's out in, uh, uh, 
they do. Um, here's a shot of the actual recycling facility. So, like I said earlier, everything is collected in one bin, and then Recology, the garbage company, has the task of separating everything into the different commodity categories, and then they um, are able to sell that, market that to uh, brokers or, or folks that recycle the items into new products. Um, so one thing that's not acceptable in the recycling, nor in the compost, is plastic bags. No plastic bags at all in the recycling. Like I said, no soft plastic, no plastic film. Um, you can see on the left-hand side, those are, um, those are, that's part of the machinery and it's turning, and it actually carries the cardboard up to a certain level and separates it out from the rest of the recycling. When you put plastic film in that system, it gums up the works. You know, it just it just messes up the machinery there. And they have to turn it off and have a guy, and he goes and removes all those plastic bags or plastic film manually. So that's a, a big reason why they don't accept it because it really makes them less efficient, and uh, that's that's not you know that that doesn't help them at all in in, in their. Uh, in their operations and trying to bring you know good value to the customer, uh, the customer in San Francisco. Um, so here are some folks that are working on the line. Like I said, recycling gives makes jobs for folks, uh, creates jobs. Here are some folks uh, separating out some cardboard and removing other contaminants like plastic film. Um, you can see uh, some glass being separated. Um, that big, long snake-looking thing of cardboard is uh, cardboard that's been compacted, and you see some of the other uh, uh, bales and materials. You have some plastics on the bottom, so it's it's loaded, it's compacted like that, loaded up onto container ships, and a lot of the material uh, goes overseas. It goes to China or other Pacific Rim countries, um, and so this is really key. This bottom part, while we have a good system in place, right? Like we're doing all this cool stuff. We have technology, and we're getting people giving people jobs. Uh, it's always best to reduce our consumption. Always best to reduce our consumption, reuse the items that we currently have, and then recycle. And then, you know, turn this product into a new product. But if you don't need it, you know, don't buy it. And if you have something that can work, then, then reuse it. My bag of outreach materials, I found that in our office, so I reused the bag that we had. You know, I didn't go out and buy a new one. Uh, here. Oh, sorry. Marvis. Marvis. I just wanted to say that on your um, paperwork for um, landfill, there's a little box in the corner that says styrofoam, don't put styrofoam in the green or blue container, but it is recyclable because they do make other things out of it. They make insulation out of it, they make building products out of it. So you can recycle styrofoam, just not in the blue or green container. And there's a website on there to um, contact. And I think it'd be really good if you put on there a phone number mm, um, for okay. people who don't have website access. Okay. Yeah. Good. Good idea. So, um, yeah, let's talk about that. So, with, yeah, with the recycling um, on this poster, you can see there's some items here in the corner. What's not acceptable? And when, whenever someone says, like, that's not recyclable, what they're really saying is the garbage company or whoever's, in, whoever's the authority on how materials are, are recycled, um, they don't accept that item for recycling. They don't have a market for that item. So as, as Marvis mentioned, styrofoam is recyclable in theory, but in this program, they don't collect it and they don't recycle it. Same with plastic bags. You can recycle them, but they don't take it in this program because of those reasons that I showed you earlier. It's really difficult to collect plastic bags in a program like this, and then it gums up the works. So if you, yes, I, I think that. Yeah, I, 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 I uh, anticipated the question. So if you really are passionate and want to divert those materials, um, there's a great resource called RecycleWhere, W-H-E-R-E dot -E org, RecycleWhere dot org. And you can use that to search for anything that you have to dispose of, and it'll tell you where to take it. If, if it's free, uh, they have pickup, or if you have to pay, you know, fortunately some items you have to pay for 
Um, Safe, Safeway has bins where you can put your, your plastic bag on it. Yes. yes. Yeah. So yeah. The, the grocery stores, they are required by law to have a bin out front for your plastic bags. So a lot of my friends take their bags, they take their bread bags, they take their newspaper bags, they take all their bags, and they put them in those. And again, that makes sense because it's all bags. They don't really have to separate too much. It makes it economically viable for them. With Recology, if, if, you're, if the plastic bags are coming up the works, you can't be profitable because you're you know, maintaining your equipment all day. So there's, there's economic reasons at play. Same thing with the styrofoam. You have to collect a lot of it to recycle it and That's make so money. Light. Yeah, it's so light. You have to, you have to densify it. It's, it's mostly air. So it's, it has, it's not recycled in this program for economic reasons, but they've tried to actually, they bought a densifier over at, um, at, at the recycling facility, um, at the transfer station, and, and they've tried to collect it and, and actually divert it. Again, we're trying to get to zero waste, so don't be surprised if, you know, maybe things change, you know, but well, more things are accepted. Yeah, when you think about it, most, most products, appliances, and things that you buy have styrofoam. You yeah. Know, like radios and things like that. Right, and, and, and that's a good point. So there's kind of there's a few things you could do. You could, you know, write or or call that company and say like, hey, I don't like this, and, and try to do it that route. Or you can try and not buy those products. And that's where we say you know you have the power of your dollar. If you're not buying the materials from the wasteful companies, they're going to learn from the other companies that are starting to you know perform better because they're pa they're actually using less packaging or using packaging that can be recycled or composted. Um, so that's something that I would encourage. Okay, you gotta keep moving then. Great question. So now we're gonna talk about compost. Who here knows what compost is? We all. It's the name of supervisor. Who's worked in a garden or you know added compost to the soil? It's food for plants, it's organic fertilizer. Huh? It's fertilizer, yeah. So folks here know, know what it is. So this program is for organics, but they call it the compost program because that's the end result. Um, so yeah, so so there's composting with worms, vermicomposting, and this compost process it's an industrial composting process. So we're it, this is compost without worms, but it's compost like on steroids. We're we're making it happen in in, in like 30 to 45 days. So with that in mind, there are certain things that are not acceptable that one may think, well, that will break down, but because of this process, it's not. So there's three main categories here. Um, top row, we've got some food scraps. In the middle, we have food soil paper. Remember, remember with the recycling, it's clean paper. And then with the organics, it's food soil paper. Uh, and then the last category is uh, plant material. So. Let's, let's go through this first, and then we'll get back to your dog poop bag question. Um, so with the food waste, it's all your food waste. Um, it goes once alive, you can throw it in here. That goes for animals and plants. And uh, it doesn't matter if it's spoiled. So if you have moldy broccoli, uh, a banana that just is way overripe, and you're like, I'm not going to eat it today. Sorry, banana, i got to throw you out. Throw it in your compost bin. It, it can take that. Um, you see here we've got bones, we've got eggshells, uh, fish bones. Again, it's all part of an animal. It was, it's all part of something that once, once alive, it can go in here. Um, and then there's some leftover pizza, you know, scraps from, uh, from dinner here, some broccoli. Um, next, we have food soil paper, your coffee filters and the coffee grounds, tea bags can go in here. If you eat on paper plates, at the end of the, your meal, they're going to be food soiled, so you can throw your paper plates, paper napkins, uh, paper cups, coffee cups, excuse me, like Starbucks cups, all that stuff can go in here. Um, here's a little curveball. We have chopsticks. Anybody know why chopsticks can go in the compost? Bamboo. The wood, the wood, right? And wood is natural, it's organic. It was once alive, it was a tree. So that's why clean wood can go in here. Uh, you know, if you're taking down a fence or something, you're remodeling your house, you have painted wood, treated wood, that's going to be handled separately, goes in the trash. But you know, something like a chopstick, toothpicks, it's all clean wood. It can go in the organics. Um, and then we have here a milk carton. I don't know if folks can see that, 
but a milk carton is compostable. It's very, very similar to the coffee cup. Now, there's a little bit of a trick here because how many of you have bought chicken stock or uh, juice, but it's not refrigerated? It's just on the shelf at the grocery store. Have you ever noticed, you know, that those those containers are are not refrigerated and wonder why? Um, well, this milk carton here, this one you would find in the refrigerated section, and that's the kind that can be composted. Uh, the trick is you look inside, well, you can tell if it's refrigerated or not, but really you look inside and the inside of this milk carton is gonna look just like this coffee cup. It'll look white inside, it'll look like paper. And what that is, is it's paper with a plastic film on it. That prevents the liquid from seeping out. The, those we can compost. We, can, we accept those in our composting program. If you buy the <coughs> other type, if you buy juice or chicken bra, uh, stock that's in a it's in a carton on the shelf at a store, if you look inside, it actually looks like foil on the inside. That is actually three materials. It's foil, it's plastic <laughs> film, foil, and paper. So it's multi-material. Oh, yeah, we have it right here. Thank you. So this one, if you opened it, you would see on the inside uh, that there's the foil lining. And this doesn't... If you can open it and drink the whole thing for us. Yeah. <laughs> then you can recycle. Yeah. The, the, this is milk, right? Uh -huh. like, yes. Milk should be in the refrigerator, but because of the type of packaging, it stays fresh on the shelf without refrigeration. So just keep in mind, you know, that there's a difference there. Uh, and, and again, when you look inside, if it's white, it's compostable. If it's metal, aluminum looking, it's trash. Um, plant materials at the bottom. So why is composting so important? Why do we really, why do we care so much about it? Um, well, as we said, we can turn it into compost, turn this material into compost, that's great. But the other reason is when material, we send organic material to the landfill, when it breaks down, as I was mentioning earlier, things are not supposed to break down in the landfill, but they do because we're humans and we're not perfect. <laughs> so things do break down in the landfill. And when that happens, it releases methane gas, which is a greenhouse gas. That's the whole, you know, that's what we're trying to do these days, reduce our greenhouse gas emissions. So by putting this material in a compost pile, we can really reduce the amount of greenhouse gases we're producing. So we're affecting climate change, and then we're making organic fruits and vegetables to feed people. The alternative was sending it into a landfill, and it just creates gas, and we don't get any benefit. From it. So it's a really great program. Um, so to answer the question about breakdown, it's kind of counterintuitive, but we actually don't want anything to break down in the landfill. We want to get the organics out, but things like dog, uh, dog waste, cat waste, um, blood, other human, you know, body fluids we don't actually accept in the compost. So if you blow your nose, you would throw that in the trash. If you cut yourself and use a napkin to stop the bleeding, that would actually go in the trash. Uh, the reason why is because this is applied to land where we're growing fruits and vegetables, and you know, folks don't really want, even though comp the composting process has been shown to like reduce and kill all those pathogens, people don't want it in their compost, so we, we keep it out. You know, people don't want dog droppings in their compost, so they keep it out. Um, but that's that's why the we actually don't want it to break down in the landfill because it releases the methane gas. So it's kind of counterintuitive, but you don't want to use biodegradable bags, compostable bags, excuse me, for dog waste. Why do you think you use horse manure but not dog? Like Golden Gate Park, they 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 um they use the horse manure from the police stables. Right. And they. Their compost, mm -hmm. and that's what they put in the park, I think. Right. <laughs> I'm not too sure, actually. That's a great question. Um, I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe it's just the challenge of collecting it all. Um, but um, yeah, you know, like I said, in the future, who knows? <laughs> there, there are people that actually compost their human waste. It's called humanure. It's pretty amazing. Yes. Yeah, so you know there there are ways to deal with our waste, but sometimes there are um, there's education that needs to be done. You know, for yeah. folks to understand, okay, it's not actually going to get me sick, but you know, there's there's challenges, yeah. And doing it on a citywide scale is difficult too. Another question? Yeah. Uh, okay, over here first. Okay, um, about uh, compost. I I um, I worked before and. 
um, all the compost I put in the horn on the ground at the uh, backyard and the front. Yes. I